Happy you are all here with us today. We are doing this Lotus Live on numerology, mood mapping, and mind mapping. I'm super excited to have Kimberly Farber here with us today that knows all about numerology and Mallory, of course, my partner here in Red Lotus Life. So um, I just kind of want to start off with saying welcome, welcome to all the new members. I thank you for being here. So excited that you are here and you are sharing your time and energy with us. And I kind of just wanted to, I don't know, this is really just in flow. This is going to be just a conversation. Um, I wanted to introduce how I know Mallory and how I know Kim, actually. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then you two can introduce yourselves. I know Mallory for a few years now, obviously. I don't know how many of you know <laughs> know our history together or not, but Mallory is amazing. We were in a couple of mentorships together, did a ton of self-development growth and expansion in the last, like, I don't even know how many years. It feels like lifetimes. I'm going to say this probably about both of you, but it's like, it just feels like lifetimes. And Mallory actually was part of my like idea like my seed like she was there from the creation of red lotus life of me even discussing it and saying this is what i want to do and this is what i want to put out into the world and i want to connect people and bring knowledge and wisdom and you know we're people that are curious souls to have a space a safe space that they can come together and learn about things that are not the norm that are things that will help you have a life of ease and flow so this is how I know Mallory. Mallory, do you mind introducing yourself? Gosh, I, gosh, I remember all of that. And it does <laughs> feel like so long ago. It was weird to hear, like when we were chatting right before this, where you're talking about like Red Lotus has been a, a three-year thing. And I was like, oh, really? It feels like it's been like 45. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, it just feels like it's always been in existence. So anyway, hi, I'm Mallory. And um, some of you know, some of you don't know, I am in partnership with Lori for Red Lotus Life. Um, some of you may have caught my content in the group. I did a lot of magic stuff for October and that was so fun. Um, as Lori mentioned, we did a lot of personal development work together. And, you know, since then I, you know, I have my own business where I teach Akashic records. I do Akashic records readings. Uh, I'm also a spiral practitioner, uh, spiraling the world. And I am also a content writer. So I'm building the leg of the content writing business as well. So I've got kind of a lot of things going as part of my business. So yeah, that's me. And I'm so happy that you're here and partnering with me and collaborating with me on Red Lotus Life. So excited. Just want to let you know, people are saying it's hard to hear me. So I had to take out my headphones and I just want to ask everybody, is that better? Can you hear me? Okay. They said there was a lot of feedback. So, um, okay. While I'm waiting for that, Kim, Kimberly Farber. Oh my gosh. She is part Hi. of my spiral like my Utah spiral family definitely another soul sister I just totally love her love being in her energy we've also done a ton of spiritual um, work together that has just like blown our minds I feel like it's just like we're not even the same people we were and I think I met you probably about a year and a half ago at spiral prac training and it was like I don't even recognize that person. I don't recognize you as that person or me as that person. And I don't know. I just, I love being in your space. You are in, you have so much knowledge and wisdom and so many things. So I'm so excited that you're here with us on this specific live stream to talk about numerology. But I'd love for you to just share a little bit about yourself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Just you talking about that and saying, you know, I remember walking into our, our spiral group. And I'm so, it's just funny because I remember walking in and now looking back at that person that walked in there and who's sitting here today, I can see why you wouldn't recognize because I don't recognize her either. We, and just 
to think that that was only a year and a half ago. It feels like so long and it feels like I've known you forever. And I'm sure we have with lifetimes, you know, totally. <laughs> and Mallory as well. So that's how we met. And this is one of my favorite things to talk about is numerology and the energy of the year. And once when I learned about this kind of stuff, it just really helped me make sense of my life and what was going on. And so it's one of my passions to talk about. And then I love how you said knowledge and all these things, because I've always got my toe in somewhere else. I'm like, Oh, let's go down and learn about this over here. Now let's, you know, I get squirreled a lot and I'm always kind of following different little paths and learning about different things. I'm very curious about all the things. (laughs) And thank you for having me here. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just super excited. I'm excited to learn all about the things. So, okay. 2020. Wow. Okay. I remember a year ago, all of us talking about 2020 and what was going to happen. And it was like, some people were saying it was doom and gloom. Some people were like, this is going to be the best year ever. And some people, I mean, because the energy was so potent, like the, the numerology, new. I can't say it numerological <laughs> it was just so potent and for me I am actually my personal year is always the same as the universal year and mm. so for me I always feel everything even more so every single year that's why I actually started doing the mind mapping every year because I realized how much I actually need to be in the know you need to be in the know I kind of have to have a plan of what's happening so with 2020 it was like it started out pretty good. I don't know about for the two of you, but for me, it started out really good. Like I was on fire. I was ready to go. And then shortly after is when everything happened and the pandemic happened. And then I was able to actually observe everything that I'd heard and be able to put it into my perspective and see like, okay, and observe what was really happening around me. So I'd love to know, I don't know, how about the two of you? How, what did you think about last year when all of that was going around? Well, when I first heard that, like, the fours are all about, like, foundations, I'm like, okay, cool. But then when I also heard that the fours are all about hard work, I was like, no. Like, mm-mm. <laughs> I don't want to work hard. Uh, anybody who's familiar with human design, I'm a manifester. We don't have that much energy. We need frequent periods of rest. And so that was something that I was really kind of coming to terms with as I'm heading into this year of hard work where I was just like, mm, but hard work and naps don't really go together. <laughs> um, but my personal year this this year, I mean, that's still going until, you know, right? That's how it works, right? Kimberly, is that it goes until my birthday? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So my birthday for 2021 has not happened yet. So I'm still in my personal two year, which is like balance relationships, like, and what I, and that's really what I focused on this year was a lot about foundations and relationships, foundations and team buildings, like our, you know, our partnerships and that kind of stuff. And so when I turned my focus away from I mean, a little bit away from what was happening universal, universally with the constriction and just the plottingness of it. And I thought about it in terms of like, I'm focusing on building these foundations in this area. So not just like my romantic relationship, not just my work partnerships, but also my relationship with my body, which has been a huge focus, especially in the last six months. Uh, magic. Magic has been happening. So, um, Yeah. It's just Amazing. awesome. <laughs> we have um, Meredith is on here going manifestors and she has like a laughing emoji face. <laughs> oh yeah. Meredith's a manifestor too. She knows all about the naps. She knows all about the naps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Kim? What's been going on for you? Like, what did you think about that at this time last year? What well, were you thinking? last year I was just beginning my one year and we'll talk about all the years, you know, but I was just beginning my one year. And so coming off of a nine year and a nine year is a, can be a really, really intense year. And it was so coming into my one year, I was really excited. 
and I'm a manifesting generator. So I do have the energy. And so I was like, all right, I'm really going to focus on manifesting. And I did. And I, I mean, it was really awesome the beginning of the year. And I knew it was a four year about foundation. So I was like, cool, I'm in a one year and I'm going to be focusing on building my foundation for the next nine years. And so I just thought it was going to be really great. I knew it was like 2020 vision. And I still believe that's what our 2020 year was all about. We were seeing things very clearly. Now, whether you choose to see them or not is up to you, but everything's kind of was laid out on the table for us to see, you know, and to tear down the foundations that were no longer working so that we could build on healthy, strong foundations. And so now coming into a five year, you know, we've got to look at where were we, where are we going and what do we want to build upon? And so four year, even though it was very tough, it's also, I look at it as I look at it as an awesome year because now we get to tear all of that down. And as hard as it is, it is hard work. Like Mallory said, that's hard work to tear down all those foundations and to be able to go, Oh my gosh, this is not working. What do we need to fix? What do we need to do? And what do we really want to build upon? If we have to tear it all down, that's okay because we want a foundation that is solid for the coming years. We don't want to build it on a crumbling foundation. And so for me, that's how I kind of looked at four is like, all right, well, we're going to see where we're going. And I was in a one personal year So all the solitude for me was, oh, it was okay. I was, I was completely fine with it. I was like, I'm okay being home. I'm okay. Kind of hanging out by myself and really intro going, what do I want to do for the next nine years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, I'm okay being quarantined with my partner in my (laughs) two year as we're creating foundations in our relationship. Like, okay. It didn't happen in a better year. And nobody's dead. Like, like we didn't kill each other. Like, it's awesome. It's great. (laughs) Yeah. I have definitely been deconstructing everything. For me, it was all about being in alignment. Like, it really did show where we were, where I wasn't in alignment, where I need to shift, where I need to pivot. It was all about pivot. Like, that was my word of the year. Okay, I got to pivot this way. Now I got to pivot this way. Um, so Meredith is on here saying, I totally tuned out everything going on in the world to work on myself in 2020. I was in a one year also. So she is totally resonating with what we have, (laughs) what's going on already. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm super excited for this new year, even though I know what, like, it's even more potent energy, right? It's all about five. And I mean, I'll let Kim go into all of this first, but I, I'm ready. Like I definitely deconstructed everything. I did a lot of shadow work at the last, you know, the last few months and really, I mean, even with Red Lotus Life, you know, Mallory and I said, no, we need to shift. We need to change what's happening here for what's to come because there is so much that is going to come and it's time for us to be prepared for it. So that's why this Lotus Live is so important and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> so Honestly, here's another thing too. Uh, you guys know I'm a planner. That's just that's just who I am. I plan and then I pivot and I plan and I pivot and I prepare. And it's probably by the way I was raised by my mom. She's actually on this live stream as well watching. And I love that. I um, Can you guys hear my dog? I'm wondering if that's the feedback. Okay, she's snoring. <laughs> she's snoring in the background over here. Um. Now I lost my train of thought, but basically, oh, it's, I like when things don't go the way that you expect them to go. I personally like to know, like that's coming, like knowing that the energy of that month, that year, whatever it is, is happening. I, when it happens, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what they were talking about you know, and then it's not so bad. And then I realized it's not just my life that feels like it's tumbling to the ground or burning around me. It's everybody is going through that. And what that does is it creates more compassion within me. Like I have more compassion and understanding because if this is what's happening with me and I know that this is the energy of the year, then I know that's what's happening with other people. So anyway, I guess on that note, Kim, would you like to tell us about the universal year and personal year and uh, like how to do all the things? 
Um, and I love that you said that because I agree with the awareness, the awareness of self. Once you have an awareness of self, then you can also have an awareness of others and you can have more compassion. You can have more kindness because you're like, oh, well, if I've got this going on, well, maybe this is where they're at. And, and I love learning about why I love numerology so much and the personal years and the life paths and all of that is because if I know mine, I know what my life is about, right? If I know my partners, I understand them better. If I know what personal year they're in, then I'm like, oh man, they're in a nine year. I'm, I'm going to really kind of have some compassion for them because this could be a really challenging year in so many ways. And so when I see them going through that, then I'm going to understand what they're going through instead of like, man, they are like, just, wow, their life is a mess right now. You know, there's a lot of endings going on. So like, that's what I love about this is because you can learn this about everyone, everyone in your family, just people in general. And it just helps you have a deeper understanding of what you're going through yourself. And then also what other people that are around you are going through. So to me, like I said, the awareness is just such a huge key. And for me, I love it. I know in my business, everything. So it's such a huge key. So um, mm -hmm. we're in the five year. Oh, sorry, Lori. Can I interrupt you just for one second? Do you mind telling what you, what your business, I mean, you have a few businesses, mm -hmm. but what is, what your main business is? Because that's what's important. This is why I like mind mapping is because I actually, well, and all the planning, like with the energy of the year, I actually do it for my business. So would you mind just saying what you do as your business? Your oh yeah. Business? So I have a real estate company. And so I started using numerology in my business for all the leaders in my company a few years ago. In fact, I was reviewing some of it this morning in preparation for this. And I did their life paths for all of them. And then I did their personal year. And it really helped me understand who they were. And then what year they were in, like I had two people who were in one personal years. And I was like, okay, you guys are going to feel like you're on your own. You guys are probably going to, if I see them going off and isolating and feeling like, oh, the world's on my shoulders, I have to do everything by myself. I know that about them. And I'm going to try to reel them in a little bit and say, okay, well, I'm still here. It's okay. Like you can still come in. I understand the energy you're in, but knowing that helped me support them so much more in business as well. Very, very cool. That's that. very cool. I actually do that with my um, clients too, like my one-on-one -on -one clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do that so that I know what they're going through as well. And I'm able to support them and hold them in whatever's going on with them. So yeah, yeah. very it's cool. So cool. Because when we know, like I said, we can just help support them or I love all, all of my clients, all my personal clients also do a lot of, you know, different work in a different area. Um, but all my personal clients, I'm always going to know what, where they're at on their life path and their personal year. It's one of the first things that we do because it's so important. And that I look at all of these things like puzzle pieces, right? Like numerology, your life path and your personal year, that's a piece of the puzzle, um, human design, that's a piece of the puzzle. The gene keys, that's a piece of the puzzle. Your astrology, that's a piece of the puzzle. So I love like trying to put the puzzle pieces all together and see how they fit and go, oh, okay, now I have the bigger picture, right? Now I can kind of see what the picture, what the puzzle is supposed to look like. I think you're Maybe. muted, Lori. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I keep... <laughs> but those that are watching the, the re I think a lot of people already know Gabby, <laughs> but she won't leave my side when I'm in here. And I think she's just really loud today, snoring over there. So um, do you mind just going into yeah. what everything, you know, like the universal year, how to find that out and then personal, all the things you can just have the floor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. So how we're in a five year this year, last year we were in a four, this year we're in a five and we go through nine year cycles. And how you find out that we're even in a five year is you take the numbers 
and you add them together one by one, and then you break it down until you get to a single digit number. So two plus zero plus two plus one is five. So that's how you figure out that you are in a five universal year. So with a universal year, it's really gonna affect everybody. You know, we're all gonna be tapping into these energies and then we'll go into the personal year, which is like the year that you are personally in in your life. In the collective five personal year, this is a year of like freedom. This is a year of like, a, hopefully, right, adventure. And it's going to be a year of change. So there's going to be so many different opportunities for us to, and I love that you said pivot and plan and pivot. I, I got to write that one down because that's a, a great one, especially for this year as well, because there's going to be a lot of changes. And so this year, we've got to really like, okay, let's learn to go with the flow a little bit more. Like, let's not get too stuck in like, oh, well, this is how things used to be. This is how things should be. Let's really kind of get more in that flow and enjoy the ride a little bit. This should be a lighter year. This should be uh, a more freedom, like I said, freedom filled year. But on the flip side of that, we always have the, that can be the challenge as well right? So if that's the, the highlight, it can also be the challenge to get there. And also five years always start off with a bang. And I think we've seen that it has. So <laughs> expect the unexpected in a five year. So don't get too attached to, to the outcomes, be flexible, be willing to just really go with the flow. And kind of just, I, I don't know, I just keep wanting to like go with the flow, just like, get into the energy of the five year and don't be attached to anything. Be willing to change and you're going to feel a lot calmer through the year. Don't get stuck. Don't get too rigid because you know, you, you just really want to be able to go into that flow. So um, that's kind of the five year. And then, um, so we're halfway through the cycle. I think I said this, that we go through nine year cycles. So it's one through nine. So, and I'll pause every, I don't want to just, if you have questions or anything, but I, I do have a question. I actually have a question. If anybody has questions that's watching the live stream, please pop it in. I'm, I'm watching on my phone for any comments. So if you have questions or comments, please let me know. I, do you know what happened at the last five year by chance? When I did said, not look and thing? see. No, when that was, I should, that'd be really interesting yeah. to go back and see like over time where are you? That's one of the things I like to do with my clients is look at the whole nine year and then even look at, okay, what happened the last time, even if you weren't aware, it's, it's start, it's fun to start to see the patterns of what was going on in your life. Mm -hmm. That would have been and 2012, how, right? What's that? That would have been 2012, right? Would have been the last five year. Yeah. Yep. So I mathed. Oh my gosh, I mathed in the morning. What? Okay. <laughs> See, miracles happen, everybody. And miracles <laughs> happen in five years. <laughs> See, just don't get attached to the you don't do math in the morning and now you can. It's like, oh, awesome. I can. <laughs> miracles. <laughs> I'm here trying to even think of 2012. I'm like, when was that? It feels like a hundred years ago. <laughs> 2012. Thrills. I know that I, I think I was just entering my student teaching program. So I was like embarking on this brand new, that is, that was a huge change for me. I was embarking on this brand new career in 2012. So that's interesting. Huge shift from being a Starbucks barista to no, I'm in the classroom <laughs> teaching children. So that's what it was for me. That's kind of cool. <laughs> well, and what's fun about that too, is then going back and going like, okay, well, what was my personal year? Where was I at on my personal years? And looking back and seeing, oh, I can totally see this pattern of how I was going through these cycles. So, and how you find your personal year so for those who don't know, you take your birthday and then you add the year that we're in and you break it down to a personal or to a single digit. So 
Like for me, my birthday is July 26. So I do seven plus two plus six plus two plus zero plus two plus one. And then that breaks down to a two. If anyone has questions on that, um, you know, type them in. Yes. I have a question. So for someone who is born in November or December, those two digit, is it, you know, so like November would be one plus one plus yeah. whatever the date is. So yep. one plus one, I'm cal calculating my partner's calling. Okay. So one right. plus one plus what is the rest? Uh, two. Two. Uh, plus the year, plus five, right? Plus, I do plus two, plus zero, plus two, plus one. I'm kind of strange that way. Nine. Okay. So they would be in a nine year. They're in a nine year. Okay. And I cool. always do it multiple times just to be sure. <laughs> so I did, I just did that once. So yeah, you just want to, you don't want to do 11 plus 21 plus right. five. You want to break every single number down to the single digit and then keep going until you have a single digit. Cute. So if you've done that, and then if you are in a one personal year, and these these years go from birthday to birthday, yes. So they're asking if you can repeat that back slowly. And also, I think um, we'll definitely have it in the comments, probably, or not the comments, mm -hmm. we'll probably put it somewhere. Um, I'm not as skilled yet to do all this techie stuff at once. I'm not multitasking mm -hmm. today. <laughs> so do you mind repeating that slowly again? Like how to calculate that? Yeah. So you're going to take the year of your birthday. So if you are January, it's one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. 12, right? So you're going to take the year of your, um, the month of your birth, sorry, the month. So if, and if you're born in, like Mallory said, if you're born in October, November, or December, you're going to take those into one digits, one plus one, one plus two, if it's December, one plus zero, you don't have to do the zero. I always do it just because it's silly, but I just do it. And so you're going to take the month. So for instance, mine is July. So I take seven, right? So then you're going to take the day you're born. And then you're going to add that to the first number. So for me, it's the 26th. So I go seven plus two plus six. July 26th, seven plus two plus six. Insert your birthday, but break them all down into single digits. So then for your personal year, you're going to take the year that we're in, which is currently 2021. So two plus zero plus two plus one. So when you do that, you're going to come up with a number. If it's still two digits, which most of them, of course, will be right then you're going to take those two numbers and add them together. So like for me, it comes up to 20. Two plus zero is two. You break it down to a single digit. Does everybody have theirs or have more questions on that? Um, so... Meredith is asking about the personal year, but do you want to take personal year questions when you're talking about person? Well, I guess this is the personal year. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about your personal year, your lifetime. <laughs> oh, wait a different. second. Okay, so she says, if my birthday is in September, was 2020 the one personal year or is 2021 the one personal year if it's birthday to birthday? What's her full birthday? I don't know. She hasn't. Okay, Meredith, just put your full birthday in here. Because I don't know. Well, like with a nine, that's just the month. So I'm not sure. But yeah. so then it's going to go really, you're going to kind of be in the energy of both for, for a certain amount of time. So I would look at where you're at the majority of the year. Mm -hmm. If you're in a one year, for most of the year, then, you know, you're going to kind of look at your, your birthday. Okay, so her birthday is nine one 
5, so 9-15-1988. Okay. So for her personal year, she's also at, it breaks down to 20. So then you go two plus zero, she'll be in a two personal year. It'll start in September and go till September. Make sense? Yeah. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Meredith, you just let us know if, if you have any more questions or if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's a 30 second delay or so. Oh. <laughs> so that's how you calculate your personal year. So hopefully everybody's kind of got that. If not, I can jump into after and help anyone with um, okay. questions. I don't have it on my phone, so I can't see the questions so or anything. She's, so she's basically just asking if she's in a technical, if she's technically in a one personal year until September. Nine. No, because we're in 2021 right now. Yeah. So it's kind of like the energy is going to start at the end of the year, but then it's going to flow in. So no, by, by then she's going to be heading into a three year. Okay. So do like, you mind going, start, go ahead. Do you mind going back in and just kind of answering any yeah. of the little comments and everything? Yep. Okay. No that problem. Be good. Good. So I, I feel like we, we start to enter into that energy, but we're looking at it as a 2021, right? 2020 was this year. So you're in that energy, but your birthday kind of starts to flow into it. I feel like we start to pick up that energy towards the end of that year for us. So that makes sense. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not being clear. No, I think it's good. My mind's in February. So I feel like I'm just, I'm literally in it. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> for yeah. And we're always in it, you know, and we can yeah. have any of these energies at any given time. So it's not like you're only going to experience one thing. That's the only thing you can still experience all of the energies of these years at any given time. But that's going to be kind of the main focus. So with a one personal year, and you'll kind of know too, like when you're in the year and you know the years, you can kind of see, oh, yeah, that's what's going on. So if you are in a one personal year, that is new beginnings. That is the beginning of your nine year cycle. And so a one year can really, really feel like you're, it's the one, right? It's a solitary number. It can really feel isolated. You can really feel alone and you might like that even. It's really a time where you're kind of focusing on yourself and where you're like, what do I want? You know, you've just come off the night of, of a nine year cycle, your previous nine year cycle, whatever that was. And in the nine year, you kind of release what's no longer serving, which we'll go into. But now you're in a one year and it's like, wow, I just got rid of all of this stuff that I don't want. What do I want? And so the focus really goes on to self and like, what do I want? And so it really can feel isolated a little bit. It can feel like you've got to do everything on your own. It can feel like you want to be alone as well. Like you kind of want to disconnect from the world because you really want to focus on, well, what do I want? What do I want my life to look like? You know, the nine year can be just like a burn down. It could be a little rough. Mine was rough. So my one year was like, I want to be alone. I don't want to go out into the world. I just want to focus on myself and kind of recover and see where do I want to go from here? You know, so it can really feel like that, but it's also the beginning of that nine year cycle. So it's beautiful. Like you're planting the seed of where you want to go for the next nine years. And so I think it's awesome that it's this solitary year because you really do want to focus on you. It's your life, right? What do you want? And so if we've got all this noise, it's really hard to focus on what you want. And so that's why I also think spending that time alone in the one year and getting clear on what you want is really important so that you have what you do want in the next nine years. Valerie, awesome. you're nodding your head. You just went through a one year, right? 
No, uh, I just, I'm finishing up a two year, but I was nodding oh. my head because my nine year was the complete shift out of teaching and into online mm -hmm. space full time. So that was, yeah, that was my nine year. And then I do remember that whole year, that whole one year afterwards being all about, it was me and my business. And that was my sole focus for a year. And I realized like, I don't know, I was just nodding because it was just like, everything was like, oh, oh, I see that pattern. I see how that played out in my life. So anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more. <laughs> so then we move into a two year. So a two year, then after the one year, it's like, oh, I've got to kind of come back into the world. It's not just me anymore. I've got to, oh yeah, I have family. I have loved ones. Oh yeah, I have a partner. Oh yeah, hi, come back in. <laughs> You're laughing because it's so true, right? <laughs> no, not at all. Not true at all. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, I've got to focus on relationships. I've got to remember, now I got clear on me. Now I want to bring back in the people that I love more closely. You know, we tend to maybe push them out a little bit in a one year, not intentionally, but it can just happen because we're so focused on self. And so it kind of comes back to like, oh yeah, I love you. I love you. I, oh yes, I do want people in my life, but you get more clear on who you want in your life now. Right. It's like, oh, what are the relationships that are serving me? What are the relationships that I want to spend time on now? Because I've gotten clearer on who I am. I've gotten solid with me. So now I get to choose who do I want to spend that time with. So it can also be that you're of setting boundaries of like, okay, well, these are the people I want. And maybe there's some that don't. So relationships can flourish and also some old ones maybe that don't serve can fall away. But it's all about building back those relationships. It's a year of love. Um, if you're looking for, um, you know, partnership and love, then that's a great year to look for that. That can definitely happen in two years. I did a retreat a couple years ago and I laughed because I looked at that. Almost everyone was in a two year. And a lot of people come to me for love and relationship type work as well. And so it just made sense. And so it was so funny to me because everyone was in a two year and I was like, wow, this is so cool because it's all about love and relationships in that year. It can be a really great year to get married. Um, it can be a great year to network. It's like I said, it's kind of bringing back in all those people that we maybe not forgot about, but maybe just kind of weren't really in the core as much. And so it's like bringing those back in, but doing it with intention of who do you really want? The relationships are really the focus of the two year. It can also be a great year for building your intuition because now you've gotten clearer on who you are. You listen to yourself, you're trusting yourself, your relationship with yourself is stronger. So your intuition can build because of that, because you have a stronger relationship with yourself. Any questions? Just sitting here ticking off the boxes like, yep, yep, that happened, that's happened, that's currently <laughs> happening, yep, 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 okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, so then we move into the three year. And three year is where it's like, oh, okay, well, I was in a one year, got clear on myself, brought all my peoples back in, kind of had to, I don't want to say it's like damage, but it's kind of like, okay, I've rebuilt these relationships that I kind of forgot about or not really forgot, but just they kind of didn't take the front seat, right? Now they took the front seat. Now it's like, well, let's get back out in the world and have some fun. Let's get creative. Like, let's bring joy, joy goddess, back into our life. Like, let's go back and now experience life. Let's get creative. Like, let's go out really. It is really about having fun. And the three is also all about communication. And so it's finding that voice and going out into the world and like, spreading that joy, spreading that happiness and going, okay, I'm, I'm ready to kind of like go back out into the world and, and have fun again. Because the, the previous years, the one, it's like I said, it's kind of solitary. Nine, everything burned down. We'll go over nine. Burned down and then building back up, 
building in your people. And now it's like, well, let's go have fun. Let's like get back out into the world. Let's like have some fun. Let's feel lighter. Let's feel freer. You know, the last couple of years can feel a little heavy. So this year starts to really lighten up for people that you want to socialize more, kind of like get out into the world and play in a three year. Make sense? Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's where you're at now? Three? Um, yeah. So when my birthday hits in mm -hmm. April, I'll be in a three year. So I'm excited about that. Three, a personal three year in a five year of Which adventure and change and travel. So I'm just oh, like, yeah. Ooh, I, I, I'm in for a badass year. <laughs> <laughs> like this is going to be fun. So then we go into four year. So after a three year, it's like, okay, we've had fun. We've kind of played. We haven't been so serious. We kind of like stopped taking life so serious. And then four comes in. It's like, well, hold up. We kind of need to like put some foundations down. Where do we want to go? Where do we want to learn? Um, four year is all about teaching. It's about developing stability now. And so the last three years have kind of been, you know, like I said, in touch with self relationships, now having a little bit of fun. So now let's put some systems in place so that we can kind of build upon what we are enjoying in this life, what's working. Let's build a foundation on that. Let's build a structure on that, that we can go into the next half of the nine year cycle. So it can feel a little more like, I don't know why this word is coming up, but it just, I'm just saying it. it can feel a little more like stodgy because it's like, oh shoot, after the three is like, well, shoot, now I kind of got to get to work a little bit. Now I need to settle down a little bit and come back down to earth and realize like, well, we kind of do need a, you know, life's not all play, right? We've got to put the strip systems in place. Let's make some plans for the future now. Let's see, where do we want to go? So that can be the four year and you'll learn a lot. It's all about um, learning about what's going on. It's structure. And so, um, and we just went through a four year. So we know what a four year can look like. I feel like most of us are very familiar right now with what a four year <laughs> can be, <laughs> but I also think there's so many good things about a four year. So you know, because you're seeing, where do I want to go? Where do I want to create for my future now? I've kind of rebuilt everything now. What do I, where do I want to go from here? What's the foundation that I want to now build upon for the next five years? Hmm. So, I think this is super important too for people, you know, as we're going into this age of Aquarius, I think this is super important to really like be clear on your foundations. I feel like we're kind of in, you know, it's only what the second week of January. So mm -hmm. we're still kind of like meshing with that. So by the end of this, I don't know, how do you feel? Is there really like by the end of January, probably to really get like tie up those loose ends of 2020 on foundational stuff? I think it's really dependent on the person. Like, I feel like how, how willing are you to look and see what's going on? How willing are you to let go of mm. what's been going on? How willing are you to step into that next year? You know, so like, that's where that we're in, in the five on this too. It's like, how willing are you to go with the flow now to see if you want to stay stuck, you can stay stuck. Mm. I mean, it's all a personal choice still. So yeah. if you're willing to let go and move forward, then it's going to be much easier. And you're like, all right, I'm just, okay, that was four year. And, you know, these are the things that I've learned. Now I'm going to move into the five year. And so I'm going to see that this is, this can be all about freedom and adventure and travel and change. So am I going to embrace that or am I going to resist it? If I'm going to resist change, then I'm going to probably have a really tough time in a five year because a five year is all about change. So I look at it as a very personal thing, like what, you know, in the four year, I mean, I just spent my whole year learning about so many things. I was in a one year. And so for me this year now, it's like, okay, I don't always like change either, but if we're going to accept this year, 
and have a great year, no matter what kind of happens, then we need to learn to embrace change. If you're in a five year on your personal and you don't like change, say you're not someone who likes change at all. Say you don't like travel and adventure and that all sounds horrible to you. Then, you know, you're probably going to want to embrace though, that that five year is going to be a year of change for you. And knowing that and embracing it and accepting it, it's going to be easier for you, even though that's not something that you're looking forward to, because maybe you're maybe you're a four life path and you really like stability and structure and five sounds horrible. So, but if you embrace that things are going to change, then you're going to have an easier time than somebody who says, I'm not changing a thing, not happening. Nope. Yeah. Well, then you're going to really struggle with <laughs> change yeah so that's <laughs> that's I, you know I am one of those people but when we if I feel like if I spend the time looking at it then I'm like okay this is what okay I'm gonna accept it and then it's so much easier than hanging on to something that I don't want to happen because it doesn't matter whether I want it to or not it is what it is so I can either resist it or accept it and move with it. Fluid. I just yeah. keep hearing the word fluid. It's just so perfect for a five year. <laughs> fluid. That's so good. I love it. Yeah. My word for the year is, is, is flow. That was the one that just kept coming <laughs> to me. So it's like, okay, perfect. I'm headed into my three year creativity, you know, uh, something that I loved about the four year, as much as I make the face about the hard work and whatever, and, you know, my brand is the joy goddess. So it's like hard work. Why would I even be concerned with that about that? But it's like the four year has been about, you know, developing the practice of writing for me, developing the discipline around writing for me. And this year really feels like it's like, no, now here's the creativity piece. Now it's going to be, you've developed the discipline and now the flow, the creative flow is going to happen. So like all of the fiction books and all of the fictional ideas that have been swimming up here for years are now finally ready to make their way on paper, which is just like, that to me is beautiful. It's like that transition piece from the four year, the hard work, the foundations, you've created your platform essentially. And then it's like, you have this platform, you have the, you have the firm foundation. You always have the firm foundation. It's there. You created it in the four year. So it doesn't have to be a scary thing. It doesn't change the, the change in the freedom that comes with the five year. doesn't have to be scary because you created the foundation already. You created the thing for you to be on that stability that you crave. You've created it. And now, yeah, you just get to. And I, I think I have that. my records open. <laughs> I was going to open my records before this and I lost time. Um, I love having them open for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that though, that you said that because you did something that maybe you necessarily were not loving, right? The discipline of that hard work of getting into that um, writing every single day, right? You develop that structure. Now the flow is going to drop in and it's going to be like, bam, you that you'll be unstoppable because now you're in the practice of doing what you really love, but you got more into the discipline of it. So now when it flows in, it's just going to be like, Ooh, you know, mm-hmm. it's just going to like come right out because now there's freedom because we get freedom from structure in some ways. And because w- if you're doing what you love, it's not hard work anyway. Now it just gets to be more fun for you, which you're yeah. in the fear. Books are going to be published. <laughs> 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 oh, we have Jamie Schumacher here saying hello, hello. hello Hi, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, are you are you planning on going through the rest of the years? I can. Do you want me to real quick? Yeah, yeah because people might have personal years like six through nine. Yep. So, yeah. I told you I can go so long on this stuff. I try to keep it like quiet, but. There's so much. Okay. So a six year. So you go from five freedom, woohoo, let's have fun into six, which is more like home, family, responsibility, kind of buckle down again. Um, it's, it's a great year again to kind of look at your home life, right? Five years, kind of more 
freedom and adventure. And then it's like, all right, let's come back down to earth a little bit and let's get back connected with our family. It's going to take the front center home and family is a big role for the six year. It's a great year to get married. Your relationships are again, highlighted. Um, it's a great year to attract your love partner. Again, if you're not in that relationship, it's also one where, you know, you may have challenges in these areas. If they're, if there's things that need to, to change, everybody's going to want advice from you in a six year. It's like, I kind of think of like the crone, you know, of the six, like for a woman, it's like, that's like, you just have all this wisdom in the six year. It's like, okay, now I'm going to take care of my family. What do you need? How can I serve you? How can I help you? I don't know why that's dropping in. It just is. So going with it. Um, so that's the six year. So you really get grounded back into that sense of family. Uh, then you go into a seven. Seven year is all about spiritual development and seeking. So now it's like going to a higher source. You've got all these questions about, okay, well, I want to do now the deep inner work. I really want to get connected on a spiritual level. Um, so there's a lot of like seeking knowledge in a seven year there's a lot of exploring. It's great to develop your meditation practice, spiritual study. It may feel like a quieter, more introspective year when you're in a seven year. Um, some people in a seven year too, they may not understand you that much because you're seeking all of this knowledge. And so I think it's very easy to be misunderstood. If you're a seven life path, for sure, those are people who can some be misunderstood by so many others. Because it's like, well, I've got, I want to learn more. I want to understand. And so you may be going through changes and, you know, sometimes people around you don't necessarily love that. They get confused by it. So a seven year can feel like you're getting quiet and people don't really know what's going on around you. Like, well, what happened to her or him? You know, they just changed all of a sudden, but it's because you've gained, you're gaining this spiritual knowledge. Um, it can also feel a little bit lonely you know, because you're, you're kind of like, now you've developed relationship with self, but this is now self on a higher level. Right. Um, and then you move into an eight, eight is like your powerhouse year. Eight is like, everything has come together. And it's just like, all oh, everything that you've been working on for the last seven years is like, whew, you know, it's the infinity symbol. And so it's just this year of abundance. So, I mean, financially, personal power, money, everything can really come in on the eight year. And it can be a fantastic year, especially in your finances. Everything is going to get amplified in an eight year. Um, it can be a really intense, energetic year because you'll, you're just like unstoppable in an eight, eight year. It's like whatever you are putting your energy into, it's going to expand. So be very careful what you're putting your energy into in an eight year because it's going to amplify in a huge level. So if you're looking to build a business, if you've, if you've already started your business, your eight years where it's going to just kind of like explode. Um, there's a lot of transformation. There's a lot of empowerment. I'm, I'm just feeling this like strong energy of the eight, just like I'm going to go out and kick ass. Like that's just what an eight feels like. It's just like this explosive, powerful energy. And then you come into a nine year and your nine years like, okay, what do we need to release now? We're going to be moving back into a one cycle. Nine year is like letting go of what is no longer serving you. Nine year is like, all right, we're going to move back into a one year. It's like this transition year, like you're coming from this powerhouse year. And then you've got your one year eight, nine, one is kind of like a three year. They kind of like go together. So your nine year is like, what worked? What didn't? What am I going to take into my coming year and what needs to go? So it's a year of a lot of transition. And if you've got a lot that you need to let go of, it can be really, really tough because if you haven't done all this, if you haven't been aware for a long time and you finally realize it might be like, whoa, I've got a lot of things I need to let go of. Right? So a nine year is I look at a nine year as like the year of surrender. Just surrender to what is happening and let things go that need to let go because you're not going to want to hang on to these things going into that next nine year cycle. So as challenging as a nine year can be, 
if you are aware of your nine year, it will be a lot easier. When I was aware of my nine year, I just laughed the whole year. Of course I didn't. I cried a lot as well, but I would laugh at the same time and go, I'm in a nine year. Okay. All right. This is what this is all about. And so at least I had that awareness, but I knew I was in a nine, which made it a little bit easier to go through. Mine had a lot of stuff that needed to get rid of. So, so that's the, that's the full cycle. Mm, I love that. That was so good. Every time I hear you talk about it, it's so much better than anything I've ever read or, you know, any kind of articles or anything like that. You always just explain it so good. Uh, and then I can just, resonate as you're talking about it. I can resonate and go, oh yeah, that happened, that happened, that happened. You just make it a lot easier to understand. So oh, good. I really appreciate about that about you. So you must not be a life path seven because you are easy to understand. I'm so. not, I'm a life path nine. <laughs> Uh, okay okay great yeah I think I yeah know. that's uh, why I'm like wait a second does that make sense <laughs> a life path nine yeah I'm a life path nine so if, I mean if, if we can have a chat sometime and, and then we'll talk about my life and be like oh yeah you're totally a nine <laughs> I've had to learn to let go of a lot but it's been beautiful so the concepts between the life path versus because we're bringing it up. So I guess we we have to go down this rabbit hole now. Um, So the difference between the, you know, the life path and the year and the personal year is we have the personal year. So we're going through this natural cycle. Now our life path is a number that is consistently with us. Are the concepts still the same? So you're constantly, you're constantly for you as a nine, you're constantly in this cycle of, releasing things that aren't serving like in this constant assessment of what is working and what is not and yes Yes. and so sounds fun and there's and and (laughs) when I do life yeah (laughs) it's uh once I learned that it really helped me though because I I understood why I experienced so many of the things that I did and so now I've I've learned that there's a lot of also great things about the nine. I always, and maybe I just always, I'm on the nine part. When I get to nine, I'm a little bit of like a, Oh man. Cause I've had my whole life as a nine. So it's amplified for me. A nine year is amplified. I'm a nine. When you are, if you're an eight and then you're in your eight year, it's just like whew, double magnified. Right. So whatever your personal year is your life path, they carry the same energy. And so everything is going to be like amplified in that year. And we don't have enough time to talk about life path, but they are the same energies. I just go into more detail of like when I'm doing life path, because it's, there's just so much there. Would you mind just, would you mind just telling people how to calculate their life path? Because, um, I've seen a lot of different information go out. Uh, Like, as you know, I texted you the other day and I was like, okay, wait, tell me how to do that life path again. Because a lot of information is coming out about all these numbers. And I'm realizing a lot of it is wrong when it comes to life path. So do you mind just saying, just telling people how they can calculate their life path number? Yep. So you take your birthday again, you break it down into single digits. So the same process that we did for personal year you're going to do for the life path, but now you're going to use your date of your year of birth. So if you're born in 1978, then you're going to go one plus, you're going to take your birthday and one plus nine plus seven plus eight. So you're going to add the whole birthday together again. So for me, seven plus two plus six plus one plus nine plus seven plus four, break it down. And then I'm not doing the math right now, but I think, you know, 63 or something, and then it's breaks to a nine. So for personal year, you take your birthday and the year that we're in for your life path, then you will take your year of birth. And that's how you calculate that. Amazing. And you're going to put all of this in the comments, right? So that people can see that. Yes. (laughs) Like how to calculate it. Oh yeah. Cause that, that's super easy. Yeah. Amazing. 
Thank you. Okay. So yeah, this, this is, has me even more excited for, um, I guess what Mallory and I are going to be talking about it. So it's, we're five over actually of what I, I thought know. we remember when I'm like, I, we don't even have to go the whole hour of an hour over the hour. I knew we were going to talk for more than an hour. I was I like, know. three of us on a call, on a call together. I was we're like, going to talk more than an hour. Really? <laughs> I know, and I'm totally okay with it. Um, what, because mine's not very long at all. Mallory, did you want to talk about yours first or would you like me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. That's fine. Okay. All right. So mind mapping. This is what I'm really excited. I am a very logical thinker. So this is interesting. You were talking about I'm a life path three and I'm a double five. So I'm a universal five, personal five year, and then a life path three. Well, which is why mind mapping now that I know what you said about threes I'm like oh this is why I like to mind map this is why this is why it resonates with me I'm a very logical thinker I love um I love science I love to know all the details about everything like I'm very detail oriented I'm a planner I'm all these things and if you know me well which both of you have this experience with me. I'm the one over here writing all the notes down. I'm like doing, like making sure I'm catching everything, right? Well, when I found mind mapping, I'm not sure if anybody here, if you're familiar with it, please say so as you're, as you're on the live stream or you're watching the replay. Mind mapping is amazing because it helps the mind remember in a different way. It actually works with the mind. Are either one of you familiar with mind mapping? I'm not. No? Okay, super cool then. Um, this, I learned this actually a few years ago and I just, I literally do it every single year now to map out my personal year and also like my personal life and then also my business or career, whatever it is that I'm, I'm doing for business, even finances, I mean, everything. But this is really cool. This is actually what a mind map looks like. I was trying to find my really nice ones, um, but I couldn't. This is the one from 2019, which is funny because I'm pretty sure this is like, I think Red Lotus is all over this, actually all over this mind map. Um, basically what you do is you take your topic. So like, you see your topic is in the center and then you have these little branches that go off. And so whenever I like to refer this like for notes, because you can actually put in the center, like the person, like let's say we're talking right now. If somebody was taking notes on what we were doing in the center of that would be like numerology, blah, blah, blah. And then everything that was landing for them that they wanted to remember or really um, install that memory then they would write up, they'd do a little branch and then just write a phrase or a word. So it's not like sentences. It's not like outlines, you know, the old times when or old times we still do it, but you know, when you're taking notes and it's like one, or, and then you have your little subtitles, A, B, you know, all that. Your mind does not think like that. Your mind doesn't think in big chunks. Your mind remembers images. It remembers words. It remembers feelings, emotions. So whenever it comes to this, it's like as you're doing this, you're literally thinking you're using kinesiology or kin not kinesiology, but what is it? Can, can, I am having a hard time saying big words today. <laughs> But you have the mind, body, spirit actually all doing it now onto a piece of paper. So you can literally do this with like lectures or anything. You can put the center there. And then for every little branch, you just put a word or a phrase that helps you remember. And then the next thing, you know, you do another branch, another branch. You're literally seeing it visually. And then um, it's easy for you to see that word. And it triggers the memory of what you wanted to recall. The beauty of this is that everything applies to everyone differently, right? Everything that you learn is your own perception and it's very different. 
So this actually, instead of, you know, when people like will give you a manual and they'll be like, here's the manual for the lesson or here's whatever. And you literally just skip through it because there's so many things that don't apply to you that don't interest you. So I really like this as well, too, whenever I am doing classes and things like that, because I can literally look at this and go and I can teach a class or I can do a lecture or a, a presentation, whatever it is, and the, the word will just trigger it. So whenever it comes to um, our like doing using it with planning the year, this was my 2019. I sat there and I said, um, my, my word was ripple at that, that word. <laughs> and so I have ripple in there and then I have expansion, self-love, uh, celebrate. And then I literally have every area. This was, this was my personal one. This was my personal mind map for 2019. And so I literally have every single area of my life mapped out in there of what I'd like to do. And then what that does is it creates that installment within your brain, your, you know, your mind, your soul, your body, all those things. And you just remember how your life is supposed to go. And if I, I was looking over this and I actually like spiral is on here. <laughs> I have community leadership, Red Lotus Life, Create a Ripple, money. I have Derek, my husband, kids, sisterhood, um, movement practice, strong, healthy body, physical activity, successful spiral practice, receive, debt free, connection, um, and then spiritual health and body. And I literally achieved all of these. Like, those are just my little branches. And then along my branches, I have. I have my words. And so I literally achieved all of those things in 2019, but yet I did this in January of 2021. So I, um, normally though, this is very creative. So this was just like me sketching it out and just kind of doing it real quick, but you can get extremely creative and it becomes artwork when it is for your year and you're actually planning your year. You're able to like I've seen the most beautiful, I do a workshop every year too with Red Lotus Life. I've done one every single year, only I've done it in person. And we will have paints there. We'll have markers, crayons, colored pencil, glitter, glue. I mean, whatever it is, because you will actually have this where you can see it every single day. And it remember, you know, your mind will remember and connect with that again. So you want it to look pretty. This one, I there's like stains all over it and all kinds of stuff. I don't know where my other ones are that were, are actually kind of pretty, but that's the, the whole point is that it can be just literally scribbled on a piece of paper or it can be something really beautiful and art. So um, I just want to check the comments right here because people are saying comments. So Meredith says, I started doing mind mapping clearing as an experiment on myself after I finished the spiral, but it was different than what you're talking about. Awesome. Okay. So Meredith, we'll have to talk about that more. I'll come back in here and, and say something on the comments, but there's lots of different ways to do mind mapping. This is one that I definitely do for my business every year. And then I also do it for my personal year. So like my personal life, I guess, not my personal year. So yeah. Oh, here's another thing too, is this is actually really popular in like England and Australia and like that part of the world where over here in America, I hadn't really heard about it. Like they grow up with it over there. That's just how they, they learn how to map out their life where we, I don't know about like, you two haven't heard about it ever. So it's just not very popular here. Yeah. I, so when you started explaining it, it's, I, I, I think I've kind of been exposed to it because it all looked really familiar. Um, but we call it, you know, we called them in school, like concept maps, mm -hmm. you know, so we learned how to do that with a concept or an idea or something we were trying to learn versus, using it as a planning tool so that so that it was a, just a, it was a different application than what I was, you know, what I've been exposed to. So that, that was cool. That was cool to learn about. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, I think I did it as well in a journal that I had that was a part of the exercise in the beginning 
but I didn't know that's what it was called. So now I want to go back and find that journal and find those mind maps. I didn't know that that's what they were called and then kind of see what I created and then learn to create them for this year as well. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally like an unconscious thing. Like you're consciously doing it, but then it unconsciously manifests, you know, you know how we do in the quantum. <laughs> we sow these seeds and then, and then it all comes back and as we receive and manifest and create. And anyway, it's just, it's been, it's almost even like sigil in a way, you know, too. It's almost like, in fact, I, I found these with some sigils and I was sitting there going, oh, I really would love to talk to Pat Newton and if <laughs> ask her how, I guess, comparable, I guess it would be, or um, like how similar, <laughs> how similar it would be to like a sigil and the energy and the intention that you go into those. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Neat. So I guess I can just start talking about mood ma mapping and kind of keep, you know, piggyback off of that. So it's similar, but different. So for me, all of this sort of got, you know, this whole journey sort of got this journey to mood mapping sort of got triggered by the fact that I was taught manifestation by somebody who is a specific manifester where it serves to get really specific. I want this, I want this, I want this. And you're making a list of whatever it is, all of the things that you want in a specific thing that you're trying to manifest for the year. And what I found is that in my human design, don't ask, I don't know how, to determine whether you're a specific manifester in human design or you're non-specific manifester. Um, this is different from the energy types, but um, every single person is either a specific manifester or a non-specific manifester. So if you're a specific manifester, it does serve you to get super specific, do a mind, mind mapping exercise. This is super specific. This is the thing. This is what I'm going for. And what I found for me is that while that works to an extent for me, I found myself really super attached to outcomes because I had been forced to kind of get into that really specific headspace. Um, and I was having a hard time letting go of outcomes. I was super focused on it and it felt really forcey. And so if you know anything about law of attraction or laws of the universe or any of that or laws of manifestation, you know that if you're trying to force something or if you're grabbing too tightly to something, that's the quickest way to push it away from us. So something that I've really been experimenting with in the last uh, four or five months is how do I want to feel as a result of having those things? So shifting away the focus from these are the things that I want and into what do I want to feel as a result of those things? right? So I'm a life path five. So I want to feel freedom with all of the things. So I'm a life path five headed into a five year, headed into a three personal year. I'm about to have all kinds of fun this year, right? So a lot of, so mood mapping is different in the sense of the visuals that you're pulling for yourself are um, about the moods that you want to feel. So what I started doing for myself, I just have a document on my computer that is just, it's just a blank document. And every time I see a picture, I come across a picture on it on the internet that I'm like, ooh, that encompasses a mood that encompasses the freedom that I want to feel that encompasses the magic, the, the mage that I want to emerge, like this powerful person that I want to emerge, like that anytime I come across something that's like, ooh, I want to feel that thing that's in that picture. I pull it and I start and I add it to this document. So right now there's a lot of beach pictures because to me that is all about freedom. That is all about lightness and um, weightlessness. And, and it's not about like being like weightless necessarily, but I am focused on my health. I am for, focused on losing weight. Um, I am focused on alleviating the pressure in my joints, the actual physical my actual physical vessel. So the beach for me also indicates that it indicates fitness. It indicates health. It indicates vitality. So 
when you're feeling into the energy of the images that you're pulling, it's like, do you want to feel those things? Um, what are the things that you want to feel as a result of the things that you're manifesting? So I spent, you know, I think like New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and probably the second, getting specific in my journaling. What am I creating in the year? And then that's in a document on my computer. I have not touched it. I have not looked at it. I don't even have it on the in the same area where I do my daily journaling. So my daily journaling is in an actual physical journal that is somewhere else. So I'm not energetically connected or tethered to that journaling at all because I'm solely focused on what do I want to feel. And then next year, I'll pull up that journaling again. I'll look at it and be like, hey, look at all the things that happened. Look at all the things that came true. Check, 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 check. Now here's what I want to do for next year. And then I'll put it away and do the same thing. So I am an experiment in action right now um, as I'm moving toward feeling the things, being more embodied, being less in my head because that's a problem spot for me is that I'm always in my head, right? And being in the feels, so which is also perfect going into this five year being in the feels like being in the flow of the feels. So that's the mood map aspect of it. And I can see now that Lori has spoken about mind mapping and I'm sp speaking about mood mapping. It's like, you can really do the two together and yeah. how powerful of a manifestation tool would that be is getting your mind on board and getting your, your energy and your, um, and your feels on board. So, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, I actually like, because I hadn't heard mood mapping before. I love putting that together. Like my mind's already like. <laughs> so, okay. So, so Denny is on here. She's asking if you can give an example. So I'm wondering like, like an actual visual example, maybe. Uh, yeah, I can. Um, I don't have one right now, but I can just like screenshot what I've got going on in my. Um, yeah in my documents and share it in the group. Awesome. That would be good. Yeah. And Meredith just says, yeah, I was just getting ready to say how super powerful it'd be to do them simultaneous, simultaneously. <laughs> so yeah. Well, this has been amazing. I don't know. Are there, was there any other questions? Did anyone have anything more they wanted to speak on? before we begin to wrap up? No. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that was really amazing. And I'm super excited to be able to have this type of discussion now in the Red Lotus Life Group. This is actually what what we want to kind of do for 2021. This is what Mallory and I were saying we wanted to do. And so we'll have this here in the Facebook group. We're also going to be uploading this to the YouTube channel. I'll be putting that into the group. I haven't yet. And even doing audio for like a podcast, because I know so many people are on so many different platforms now. And some people are saying, they keep telling me, I want to be part of Red Lotus. Like my local people are saying, I want to be part of Red Lotus, but I'm not on Facebook. So we're trying to just, you know, Mallory and I are, this is the whole thing with five year, right? Is just being fluid and really just wanting to have that desire to reach and impact people and have this knowledge available and this information available to people. Um, and just serve in such a bigger way and just have that bigger impact. So um, I guess we could just go around right now and just, you know, Kim, do you have anything that is going on? I'm so incredibly grateful. We're both so incredibly grateful that you were here with us today. Um, what do you have going on right now? <laughs> so many things. Um, I am getting ready though to launch out, um, Something new that I'm doing that I'm really excited about, it's called Soul Sessions and it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we really are gonna be looking at taking all of these things and putting the puzzle pieces together. Um, and so that's what I'm getting ready to um, launch right now. But so many things, so many things, it's hard for me to always, this part's always so hard for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of what I have going on right now. 
Nice. Thank you for sharing that. And, and for anybody who is wondering, Kim is amazing to work with. So I actually do refer a lot of people to her. A lot of my own personal clients even I'll refer to Kim because she's amazing with everything that she does. Mallory, what do you have going on right now? Well, I'm in a launch right now for my Akashic Records course. So anybody who has been wanting to learn how to read their own Akashic Records, um, it's the how to, like the actual how to access uh, module dropped on Friday. So it's only been a few days. So it'd be super easy to catch up for anybody who's interested yeah. wanting to register for the soul's journey, uh, because the how to is just, it's, I, I mean, the how to is just the start. And the rest of the course really focuses on different things that you can do, the types of healing work that you can do, getting clarity on your purpose, um, expanding your spiritual gifts. I mean, there's just, there's so much of the type of work that can be done in the records. And so I speak a lot on that, on how to actually conduct work in it versus the simple how to access, which I feel like a lot of courses uh, sort of fo focus on is like the how to, and it's like the how to access versus here's all the types of things that are available to you in the records, which really is, is infinite and cannot be covered in an eight week course. But I covered, you know, the things that I felt were more most applicable, applicable right now, which expands into spiritual gifts and stepping more into purpose, which I think are really big for people right now. And what is really up in the collective. So I focused on that. And I'm super excited about it. Um, today's supposed to be the last day to register, but if anybody is watching this and wants to register, reach out from reach out to me, and um, I can extend the date. You know, if you if anybody's interested, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Love Come on in. Records, and I read my own, and I read for others. But I even want to do your. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. Sign me up. <laughs> Because there's a VIP option that includes like massive amounts of clearing, past life clearing, ancestral clearing, and spiritual gifts clearing as well. So, you know, there's just, there's a lot to it. So, um, yeah, definitely reach out. People are interested. So. Mm, amazing. <laughs> Yeah. And I love for those of you who have not worked with Mallory before, she's amazing. Um, I mean, she used to be a teacher. So whenever she does teach you something, you really do learn and you learn on a different level. I love the way you teach because it's so it's just simplified. Yeah. And so just being in the energy of you has been amazing with anything that you're teaching. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So what do you okay. have going on? I have a lot going on. <laughs> The second I that we were even planning this and Kim's like, ooh, let's do it on 111. I was like, oh, I am starting everything on 111. <laughs> so I have dropped actually some some really cool things. I've restructured a lot. So I do have spiral still going on. I have one-on-one -on -one spiral and group spiral if anyone's interested in that. But what I dropped today and opened up was my signature say yes to soul program, which used to be, well, it's say yes to soul and visionary unleashed. They were my two like signature programs that were just like high, they were intensive and a 12 month commitment and like complete transformation. Well, with the, you know, 2021 year of change, I was like, I want to make this accessible to everybody because there is so much happening. So I've actually brought it down. I brought it down. It used to be like a high level prize and I brought it all down to where it's actually just, it's monthly. It's a month to month thing. You're working with me in a group setting. Um, every week we'll be doing different like awesomeness. So say yes to soul. I'm all, I'm just excited right now. Can you tell? Say yes to soul is all about connecting to your soul, your authentic self and getting to know who you are again. Like what lights you up? What makes your heart sing? And then Visionary Unleashed is I have a passion of working with leaders and really helping leaders or anyone who has a vision just release that vision into the world. Like So in Visionary Unleashed, we are designing and creating your vision. doesn't matter if it's your business, if it is a book, a project, um, 
it really doesn't matter whatever your vision is. I even have people in there creating um, towns like communities. So and countries. <laughs> I actually have someone in there that's changing a country right now. So if there's, you know, it doesn't matter what it is that you're working on, it will apply to you. And it's actually really affordable and accessible. So that's, those are both dropping today. I'm doing the first content in the, there today. And then if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I have what I call the container. And then, so these other groups are actually the group, you know, group workings. And then if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, it's called the container. And that drops today. We're doing it. We're starting it all today. It's been amazing. People are in there introducing themselves, saying where they are in the world. Um, it's just been awesomeness. And then this is happening today. I was just like, I'm just in a full on, I'm just excited. I'm just like, I'm very radiant today. I woke up very much just excited and like, woo, this is the day. This is the day. <laughs> Everything's happening. Um, I'm also doing on like particular to this, I still need to do my, my planning for the year, my mind mapping. So I decided I would go ahead and just do a mind map workshop that I just barely scheduled the event. It's a Facebook event. Um, I'll drop it into the group here. That's going to be on the 27th at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's going to be available for replay. So if anybody, you know, is not able to make it live, it will be available for replay. So, and there's a registration thing and everything there. So as soon as you register, then I'll send you the Zoom link and we'll all do it together or you can do it together with us on the replay. So, yeah, I have a lot <laughs> going on, but it's exciting and I, I love it. So... I hope anybody who feels called will join myself or Kim or Mallory and whatever it is that we're doing because we we're lit up. We're passionate. That's what I love about us. <laughs> this was so, great, Lori. Thank you so much for putting this on, putting this together. I really appreciate you having me and I learned so much. So so excited. I love everything that you all have going on. I'm like, oh, send me up, send me up, send me up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> this is fun. It was fun. I'm excited. So um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Mallory. I'm not sure what we're doing next month. We'll figure it out and we'll post it in the group. Indeed. And keep an eye on your emails because we'll also send an email out about it as well. So mm -hmm. yep. yep. And Instagram and all the places. <laughs> Oh, right. Instagram. <laughs> I always forget about Instagram. I don't know how to work anything there. <laughs> I know. It's all good. See, this is why we're partners. <laughs> this is why we do it. Okay. Well, have an amazing day. If anybody has questions, please, you know, put it in the replay, the comments in the replay. We'll get to you and respond. Kim's amazing with all the energetics. There's a lot of, I think there's going to be a lot of people asking about the energetics of the numerology. And then Mallory, if anybody's interested, get on her course, do it. For reals. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> All right. Bye, All right. You. Bye everybody. Amazing day. Bye. Bye.